you dealing with maybe some quite heavy emotions at the moment and it's really tough it's really denting your confidence going forward it's really impacting you moving forward in life well today i'm going to talk about processing heavy emotions having gone through some quite heavy stuff in the last couple of years and my experience in in working through with this and if you stay until the end i have an extra point for you then as well now, just before we dive into today's episode, I wanted to point you in the direction of our free weekly newsletter, where I'm going to keep you up to date with the latest podcast episodes so you don't miss any, and also give you a free weekly confidence hack as well, in addition to that. So if you want to keep part of the community and have these free weekly newsletters, all you got to do is click in the link in the show notes below. Now, like I was kind of saying, in the last couple of years, I've had some real challenges. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean, and again, it's not about comparing what I've gone through to someone else. Just for me, it was, it was quite challenging, like personal and professional challenges, uh, both in a workplace, both uh, in a business perspective and in like dating relationships as well. And even relationships with other people, There's uh, there's been some challenges in all areas, right? And what I found is it's opened up some quite deeper traumas, some deeper grievances that I hadn't processed, the loss of people when I was younger, the loss of situations. And I noticed that I'd run away from quite a lot of them through most of my 20s by going out partying, just keeping busy working, all sorts of things to distract myself, subconsciously about even realising it. And it actually led me to going deep, going into the Amazon rainforest to do some deep medicine work, some deep plant medicine work, and really working with a community, a bunch of people. And uh, I've done somatic work as well. Some quite heavy work to really go deep and discover myself and who I really am. And yeah, it's hard. It's really hard to kind of process some emotions. And I've had to cut things out, like uh, cut out alcohol, for a period of time, I go on spells where I cut it out just when I'm doing some deep work on myself and uh, reduce certain like sugars and actually sitting with myself uh, rather than going out and eating stuff or perhaps uh, just distracting myself with too much work. Although I do get caught in, a, in doing too much sometimes, <laughs> admittedly still I have to call myself out. And what I found is even if we don't recognize we're blocking out the negative emotions, which I've certainly been guilty of, if we can't allow ourselves to feel all our emotions, our negative emotions, how can we really experience the true beautiful ones? And I heard that quote and it really made me think. And I was like, wow. In fact, my coach mentioned it to me and then I just saw it from someone else quoted and I was in a different place. And sometimes when you, maybe when you hear something, sometimes it really hits you, really hits you hard and you're like, wow. Yeah, so I'll say that again. If you can't allow yourself to experience the negative emotions and you try and block them out, you're also blocking out the positive, the real beautiful emotions like love, gratitude, joy, real happiness. So I found it so key to be able to process all kinds of emotions. Now, I want to ask you this. If you keep blocking negative emotions out, do you find them bouncing back? Because like I got to a certain point, I could block negative emotions, but actually they kept bouncing back harder. Until I started sitting with them and feeling into them and understanding them, then they started changing, started shifting. And we're going to go into some points on, on this in a minute. But yeah, I've, I've certainly been guilty of that, of blocking them out. So here's what I found really useful for processing some of these heavy emotions. My, I'm going to start off with my favourite breath work i've mentioned this in recent podcasts in the, in the last like six months or so particularly because i've really gone heavy on it breath work is key for me because it goes into your subconscious mind into areas of body that you don't even realize have stored thoughts stored emotions because your body often has stored like trapped emotions trapped trauma when i say trauma it means different things to different people but It doesn't mean you had some real violent like upbringing or event happen to you, right? Now, obviously that that can impact you and that will live in your body as well. Yeah, it can be you're shouted out by someone or 
something like unexpected happen when you're young and it really stored an emotion in you. But breathwork really allows you to get into those feelings and release some of those because they're actually holding you back that I found personally. So breathwork, you can look, there's a great book. There's some great books out there. There's a great book just called Breathe that you can pick up. There's the work by Wim Hof is really, really good on that as well. Or uh, Somatic Breathwork is a really powerful organization who guide you through and facilitate this kind of breath work as well. The second thing, finding time every day to process how you're feeling, not just getting up and getting into the swing of things. But if you do do that, make sure you find some time, middle of the day, end of the day to actually process if that's your preferred way. But just finding that time every day to process your emotions because I know it's not going to be possible every moment. You might be feeling really anxious, really stressed, and you're in a meeting and you can't just say, uh, I've got to sit out the room to do like five, 10 minutes of breath work and really processing. I know it's not always possible, but find some time maybe in the morning or evening where you can sit with yourself even five, 10 minutes and process things. And I like to keep a log of things. So I can, if I've noted them early in the day, I can go back to them. Third one. Have an easy in the moment process because sometimes things can just pop up. So I've had that suddenly out of nowhere, I'm just feeling a bit stressed or a bit low energy or a bit tired or a bit angry about something. And I'm not even sure what it is. Now that thought that's coming from a thought because the thoughts affect our feeling, but you're not always conscious to what the thought is. Again, it can be something in your body that's subconscious, but you can raise it to your consciousness because you can be like, okay, what is that for? And that'll make it more conscious. So what I do is I have a really real simple process where I acknowledge what I'm feeling and I wake up, I go, okay, I am feeling this. And then the second thing is I don't um, identify with the emotion. I am not anxiety. I am not stress. I am not anger. These are just things that are going. These are just emotions that are going through my body right now. And then thirdly, I allow myself to feel it. I just allow myself to feel it because if you start resisting, it just makes it stronger. If you allow, you, even though it's uncomfortable, you allow yourself to feel it, what will happen is either it will neutralize or you'll feel more joyful. Just give it 60 seconds. If you're feeling a negative emotion, allow your body to feel it. Don't get so caught up in the thought, just feel what's coming and then watch the shift, right? The fourth one, if you're, and this is what I like to do, is... Basically, note down certain things, certain patterns that are happening. I just, just use your notes on your phone. And then what I'll do in the evening is journal it out a little bit just before I go to bed typically. So note down what maybe some of these challenges are and then actually you can process it when you journal later. And then my fifth point is have support systems, have the right support in place. So key you have people to speak to. I have like a therapist, I have a coach. I have many other people I speak to, right, who I know are in my corner because that could really help process emotions. And I want to be really share something that's really made a difference. There are there are people who care sometimes, but they're not necessarily the right people who who aren't that great at listening or just throw their own challenges on you. So make sure you don't be scared to invest in yourself, right? in someone who's going to support you, whether it's a therapist, whether it's a somatic coach, I've got both of those, where you can talk to someone and really get that support for yourself. So I've got a bonus point for you as well, but just before I get onto that, I want to mention this, that if you want to stay on top of all the latest podcast episodes and keep up to date with them and have a weekly confidence tip, all you got to do is subscribe to our weekly newsletter and you can do that in the show, lo show notes below and hit that link okay my bonus point as well this is maybe tough and a, a bit strange to hear but it, bear with me just try it maybe not when you're in your most intense emotion thinking about the situation maybe when you're sort of mildly okay about it maybe there's a situation that's really bothered you for me it's being like uh, a particular past relationship right and it brought a lot of anger, a lot of frustration. And what I did was write down the lessons that I'm grateful I learned from it. More about myself, that I needed to do more inner work. I need to connect more with my own heart and actually understand that, 
yeah, sometimes people aren't always going to be right for your life. And then write what you're grateful for. What has that experience really made you grateful for? For me, for example, I found out how many people loved and cared for me when I was upset. Wow, how fortunate am I? Like, I had like, and I know not everyone is like necessarily has the support family, but I had two parents who were like really caring about me. And even though I, I made some decisions they didn't agree with in terms of trips and things that I made for my own benefit, they were generally very caring and considerate. Wow, how grateful am I for that? I'm so grateful that I was able to connect even more with who I am and understand what I want and what I don't need in my life. When you can start looking at the lessons, and it doesn't have to be like a, a relationship situation like that or any kind of relationship situation, but typically it might be because relationships are the things, and not just intimate ones, but the things that impact us the most. But think of a situation, it might be a job loss, might be a business loss or something. But if you reflect on a situation that's really weighing on you, think about what you learned and why you're grateful for the experience, even if it is a tough one to go through. And get down at least 10 for each of those, because then that will shift your perspective. So that's what I wanted to share with you today on how you can work through some of these heavy emotions. I've given a few things today. So just go out and implement one of these, right? If you keep doing the same things and just listen to me and go, oh, that's great jolly i really enjoyed that and you don't implement any of this in your life and then you're like my emotions are still challenged well i'm sorry but you actually have to do the work even though it's tough it's like a workout you can know that you've got to go to the gym and work out if you don't do it though you're not going to change the same is with your emotions if you know you've got to do some work on yourself and you don't do it and you keep hearing things going i know that but you don't know it because you're not doing it so remember actually take some action on it as well so I appreciate you for being here. You're improving other people's lives by being the best you. And remember, you are in control of your own self-esteem and confidence. <laughs>